Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So we've seen so many close calls with apparently opposing forces, you know, getting right next to the other. This one's super close. This is an Iranian Navy helicopter making a bold pass past a U.S. ship. And you could see uh, from here, I mean, this this is really close. And, you know, this is happening time and time again. We had talked about that Vietnamese flanked, flanked, flagged oil tanker uh, that was seized by the uh, Iranian Republican Guard. And, you know, they had said that the U.S. had basically, you know, stole it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let us and, just take this. And, of course, the U.S., you know, said, oh, no, no, that's nonsense. But there's most definitely aggressive acts going on, confrontational acts going on. Here you see the fine dining where country threatening Australia with a heavy attack and warned allied forces better be prepared to sacrifice in defense of Taiwan. After Peter Dutton confirmed we would join the U.S. in protecting the island, so China ominously declared it will attack Australia if they come to the aid of Taiwan explosive comments you know the comments are are definitely going up as far as tension ratcheting and you know the lockdown that's in effect in australia is so severe and you know it's going to get even more severe there was actually an official on uh that was making a statement just saying how if you haven't done uh what the you know official stance is on a big, big topic, probably the biggest topic out there in these days, well, life is going to just absolutely suck for you, is what he was mm -hmm. saying. You're going to be very lonely. You're not going to take part in any reindeer games. Right. You know, you know just like Rudolph. You can't yep. You can't go uh, to the cafe. You can't watch movies. You can't go shop. You might not even be able to eat. If uh, it's, it's pretty much like you're, you're going to probably have to just rely on the help of your fellow man. Uh, to survive unless you're you know, able to self-survive on whatever property you have. But then, you know, we have heard reports of seizing uh, ASSE, TTS, mm -hmm. you know, or, yep. yeah, you know what I mean. Your stuff, any, anything that means anything to you. Yeah, this, this is just so incredible. But think mm -hmm. about, think about, you know, where Australia and New Zealand are. They're very close. Uh, to the fine dining ware country. And, you know, there is already, as we have been talking about, obviously there has been this Trojan horse. And, you know, many have come to the conclusion that perhaps it's already a done deal in so many ways as to who is really in control right now in certain areas. So then when we look at these statements, just, you know, it makes you wonder. It, it's all, again, this is all drama. It doesn't mean that it's not real, of course. You know, as we've said before, even if the string pullers are pulling all the strings on both sides, there still are conflicts, and there still have been two global conflagrations. And, you know, this, this is very ominous, and it's not the only thing that's uh, ominous as we see all this hype coming out and all this all these aggressive statements here you see from the sun uh uk tabloid cheers us hypersonic in uk es's in germany shows mushroom cloud over moscow now we've gotten from the galactics that they won't let that happen mm -hmm. you know it they won't let it happen they they want to give us free will but then also, when you're talking something like that, uh, they will step in. And again, all these NUKESs, they don't just affect us, you know, on our density. They affect other densities. They actually tear holes into the time-space continuum. And they do. And I know <clears throat> in my heart, in my heart of hearts, they're not going to let this happen. So, you know, to me, that makes this just propaganda and fear mongering, you know, but still it's here and it does affect people. So our job, I feel, is to bring some kind of relief 
to people and say, hey, Galactic Galactics have said this over and over and over. They're not going to allow this to happen, and it just is not going to happen. So, you know, we're aware that they are most definitely trying to hype the fear, of course. As we've said, there are beings that simply live off of the fear. Mm -hmm. Everything is energy, and, you know, a certain energy most definitely can be consumed as, as fuel and food for certain entities. But also... I do feel uh, a lot of it's planting seeds in the consciousness, mm -hmm. getting people to feel it's inevitable. We still, if we go wake up enough people, and as we're going to see, there are people awakening uh, in droves to what's going on. We, we need to, you know, put cold water on the situation. You know, there's people that are walking around like zombies and mindlessly mindlessly going through things without any sort of connection to their higher selves. And, and that's so sad because, you know, that's just a recipe for disaster. And, you know, there's a lot of things in here uh, that are actually totally erroneous too, um, which this points out, like originally reporting that the new missiles could hit Russia in six minutes, then they revised it to 21 minutes, 30 seconds, which is a big difference. And again, it's not truly hypersonic, so to speak. And the U.S. did, though, uh, in, in fact, reactivate the 56th Artillery Command at a ceremony in Germany earlier this week. That unit had been inactive since 1991. You know, 30 years inactive, now it's made active. And, you know, with this article also gets into some of the treaties that um, were absolved going back to number 45 and have stayed absolved. Again, these treaties too, which um, previously wouldn't allow the strength of certain weapons to go below a certain threshold, which might hit you as being counterintuitive. But again, it's, it's blurring the lines is what it's blur doing, blurring the lines. So you actually have migrants saying that the Belarusians took them to the EU border and gave them wire cutters uh, to go through and to get into Poland. And we had talked about all the war games going on with Russia and Belarus and all the migrants, you know, that are attempting to flood in right now. And, you know, many people have said, you know, nothing new. Migrants have been coming in forever. And as we've shared, there are these sleepy cellular units that we have to speak about in, in code that yes. I don't think it's too hard to figure out what we're talking about, that in many cases have been in place for a complete generation. And it might not be the original people that came over that are going to be carrying out orders. It could be their kids. Who knows? Maybe even in some cases, grandkids. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, that is an area that we are definitely watching. You see the U.S. Army Striker ICV to receive directed energy protection against drone swarms so yes they are manning newer uh weaponry onto some of the new um equipment as well there there is video uh down there but yeah directed energy weapons that's a big thing and it's going to be a big thing in any future conflicts really uh, as we've we've talked about all the things from that cuban syndrome with the diplomats that's happened in multiple places. Uh, strange people having cardiac issues. Uh, you know, there's there's so much going on right now. It raises serious constitutional concerns. So the appeals court reaffirms reaffirms the stay on the dates for men by the 46 regime. And actually, you know, too, when they they talk about this, they say that it's it was interesting. Um, because some people were misinterpreting this in uh, a very curious way, um, but they say it's it's absolutely um, you know does appear to be unconstitutional. Uh huh. Well, you know, there's an awful lot of things that are unconstitutional now that are simply done without following anything in the Constitution. You know, wasn't Congress supposed to declare? war before we got involved in you know certain conflicts militarily and then yet we still had you know all these non-stop wars that keep going on just from 
you know, basically the executive power position. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you were talking the other night about these words that they were using. One was overboard, reaching overboard. And then the other word directly below it was reaching overbroad. Right. That's exactly it. Yeah. That was really strange. Yeah. And so people were saying that the date for man was going way over board, but they actually stated it was overly broad. So, and that's a big difference, you know, because if you're saying it went overboard, then you're basically kind of, you know, it's more of throwing the whole thing out the window than when you said overbroad, because then you're just basically saying, you know, that um, you might have to make this a little tighter and then it might stick. You might have to whittle it down, make it more specific and apply it to only certain groups. So, you know, that's, that's a big, big difference. Um, but any way you look at it, it is interesting. And it's part of what's going on here. As we see, Oklahoma guard goes rogue, rejects the man, you know, <laughs> yep. D-A-T-E, after sudden change of command. And I think we're going to see a lot of this. This is from Air Force Times. Um, you're going to see a lot of this, I think, in many states. And as we were saying in the last few videos, there is a direct confrontation that's going to be brewing. It's a game of chicken to see who's going to blink, mm -hmm. so to speak. And the whole world is in this game of chicken. Uh, unfortunately, in some places, you know, it, it's just it's, it's not, let's say, contested enough at this point uh, by, by powers that already are. You know, it's just lockstep following along behind, unfortunately, without, you know, perhaps sticking up for what people truly do feel and believe. And here you see the new commander of Oklahoma National Guards declare the organization will not enforce the DOD's date for men on its troops. Yep. I mean, just right out there. Um, on November 2nd, he formally requested not to enforce it on the Air Army and Air National Guard members. This is it. I mean, I, I see a time when, you know, I think a lot of a lot of military personnel are simply going to be heading home. Yeah. They're going to be heading home uh, it, with the, the thought in mind of they're going to be protecting their home, whether that's Oklahoma or Texas or Florida, South Carolina or the Dakotas or, or wherever that is. I think you're going to see that in ever increasing numbers. Well, it is. It's part of the evolution and it's part of the heart chakra where people want to be closer to their loved ones and protect them because they know that things are changing. Times are changing. So their soul is being pulled elsewhere. Yes. Yeah. It's part of the great divide. And uh, here we see Merkel is obviously urging certain people to reconsider and you know again the army prepares to step in and help where it's needed and this is that slow turnover to where we get used to seeing the army help uh deliver say oil and gas and help even in hospitals help everywhere until we just kind of get used to a m-a-r-t-i-a-l l-a-w kind of lifestyle yeah you know where you're just simply used to it and you know you're and that that's not good <laughs> to put it bluntly you know when we start getting used to that it feels like you know we're living in this uh complete um one world n-a-z-i fourth you know reich type of scenario this i thought was very curious as uh, Ghana, for those of you that don't know uh, Ghana, you know, this is an African nation and we could see where it's located as it slowly backs out. We've seen some anomalous waves before. There was a lot of those in 2017, 2018. I know Mr. MBB uh, did a lot to cover that and, and others as well. We talked about it too. Huge tsunami-like tidal waves destroy homes, displace thousands, and unearth bodies out of the graves in Ghana. And thousands of people in Ghana's Volta region were left homeless after huge tidal waves swept through their homes, 
most of the victims, mainly children and women, unfortunately, as their homes were destroyed by storm surge. It was a tsunami-like phenomenon that came in. 1,557 individuals displaced, 239 houses affected in just one district there. As you see people loading up into boats, as we've seen so many times, and then you have all these people that are now homeless. And, you know, it's not a good situation with the unearthed bodies, obviously, you know, disease, everything. Very sad. Very, very sad what we see going on. Very curious, too, with the anomalous waves. One of the things that hit me, because I've seen them over in the Atlantic area of, of uh, South America and over on the opposite side of Africa, and it makes me think about the South Atlantic anomaly where, you know, that's where the magnetic field is the weakest. And we, we've seen them over in this area, you know, multiple times. And I'm just wondering if it has anything to do with that. It very well could. It very well could. We can look into that later. And here is a very bright fireball. It changed in color from green to red as it went through the sky and a 90 degree turn no just kidding just <laughs> but wait, kidding but it wouldn't surprise us i know it's just uh you know we've seen so many fireballs and you know again so many of them yeah sure a lot may actually be meteors but many of them most definitely feel like either entities or ships so you know talking more about water purification uh because this is something that the guys want us to get you guys thinking about more um, obviously, life straws, it, they, they can actually filter an amazing amount of water. And so I think we have, you know, a bunch of those. I know we have, a, I know we have several, um, but we do have those. We have water bur purification tablets as well, um, which again, you know, it's, it's something else you can do. Think about it. You know, this is, it's different with everybody anywhere that you're at. So you might even be somewhere where you think, you know, I don't got to worry about water because there's water everywhere, right? Um, in the worst case, you know, just go get out of a stream or a lake and boil it and, and we should be okay. But, you know, again, realize there's stuff all around us. There's stuff, unfortunately, coming down from the clouds. And who knows what's in that stuff coming down from the clouds. And, you know, there's all these other options that we could do too, such as, uh, you know, these rain barrels, rain barrel systems, you know, out, out west, you know, we saw a ton of this and, you know, we did utilize a big, uh, big one like this at the uh, cabin that we were staying mm -hmm. at. It was like 2,500 gallons and, you know, I'd have to go turn the pump on, uh, you know, every so often uh, to pump it in, you know, to replenish it uh, from a well that we had, um, but again, you know, there's so many things you could do in a pinch. Like, you know, if you're really desperate, again, you could even convert trash cans. But of course, you've got to be able to purify it. Yeah. And some of these are, are pretty and stylish and would actually look like a nice Ooh. little addition, like the terracotta ones. I like that one. I do too. Uh, I saw some terracotta ones. I think, uh, I think it was a Walmart advertisement, which of course, nobody wants to support Walmart. Um, but they were only like $79, I think, for a 55-gallon. So if you had, you know, those around, you know, four, six different downspouts, it could give you some storage. Yeah, it could. That would be in a pretty way to do it, too, if you don't want those black barrels, you know, kind of set around your house. And this is an article, loveyourlandscape.org, just to give you, again, some more ideas about rainwater catchment systems. You know, even having a pond or a pool, you know, could be uh, an emergency water source as well. You know, think of, think about these things. Um, again, you know, where we are now is so different than where we were uh, a year ago. You know, a year ago, you know, you're, you're praying for water out in the desert mm -hmm. and you're, you're checking carefully, making sure the well's okay. Um, because obviously, you know, life and death in the desert and, you know, here we should, we should get good water, good rainfall. Although I've noticed it's definitely been drier than I think typical. Um, but also, you know, what you eat has a big impact on your hydration. If you don't eat any fruits and veggies, fresh, fresh fruits and veggies, 
you know, then you, you might actually be more dehydrated than you know if you're only relying on what you drink, uh, you know, as far as you know, actual water content. Uh, wild plants, great sources of, of water. And even if you're out in the desert, you know, prickly pear and yeah, stuff, prickly like pear. knowing mm -hmm. what's out there. So, you know, I won't go through all this, but I, I will give you guys the links. You could even tap a tree uh, again for sap year round. Mm -hmm. So lots of cool thoughts. And, you know, again, in the uh, zombie apocalypse, you know, and say in a more urban setting, hot water heater probably has a good source of water this is again in case of absolute emergency even toilet tanks not the bowl yeah the, the bowl the tank the tank, the tank. <laughs> even there could be water uh just trapped in inside the pipes and stuff you know, as I would well say that's a good reason not to use those toilet tank cleaners in case you ever need that water yes yeah so yeah hot water heater toilet tanks plumbing pipes as well all options so Jeff Bezos, right? He has a, a vision and he says only a select limited amount of people are going to get to stay on earth. Everybody else got to get off. Hmm. So he didn't really say it exactly like that, but he kind of did. When you get down to it, he sees the earth becoming like a new national park and people will go to earth just like they, you know, maybe go to Yosemite or Yellowstone or something along those lines, you know, for a treat, for a vacation. Most people are going to be living out in these permanent settlements out in space and in ships. Is This is what he envisions. Humanity will move most industry into space and allow only a select few, let me guess who, yeah. to remain on our planet, which will be turned into a natural resort. Yes, this is the vision of the billionaire, one of the richest people on the planet. Yeah, people are going to be moving out to space to colonize space and, and to, you know, work it. Just like, you know, work in the mines. Hey, I'm off to work. I'm going to Mars. You know, yeah, they got me working in the mines again. Oh, he's quite a piece of work. Yeah. What a dystopian vision of the future, you know, because we are in a symbiotic relationship. It's like taking a child away from its mother. It is, and it, and it there would be far-reaching consequences, too. I think that's one thing some of these beings don't quite understand it's like they think they can push the limits and they think they can push beyond what nature will allow and at some point they the line is drawn and they are close when you um have your light body developed and your merkaba is fully developed you can travel anywhere anywhere in time space mm -hmm. and that's the natural way of, of doing things like this. Sure, we could use technology. Uh, you know, there there is technology out there. There are ships. You know, we've seen uh, Laurel's ship, for instance. Mm -hmm. She manifested it for us when we were in New Mexico, when we were meditating, coming out of meditation, looked up and saw a cloud, and there it is. It, it manifested, and then it was gone. Um, it took a decent amount of energy to get it to manifest in a 3D sense where we could see it. Um, but it actually was probably more in, in a 4D sense. But when we're in a meditative state, we're changing our, our perception. So, you know, often when I first awake from either sleep or from meditation, I'm aware I could visibly see beings uh, that then later on become energy patterns and then, you know, are just either waves of energy or they're no longer visible. Uh, as I come fully into the 3D consciousness. And that's something that I've noticed all my life, all my life. It's gotten much more profound now. You know, so it, it could have been that she was on that 4D. And they do utilize ships. You know, the Galactic Federation does have ships. But you can also go anywhere in your Merkaba, in your light body. And ultimately, that's the key out of the 3D, 4D loop. When you have a fully activated functioning Merkaba, you know, the sky's the limit. It's true. It's something that this is why they don't want to give us the time to develop that. And many of you, I know I hear from you and you do see things in the sky and I feel you are also being watched by your star family. They're keeping, keeping tabs on you, so to speak. But if you learn how to go into these deeper states of meditation, you will have actually more contact with them because you're changing your vibration, you're changing your knowing and your understanding and your perception as well. 
So that's something that's really um, a very well guarded secret, you know, as far as us being able to travel with our Markabas. Again, the elites are trying to make things look like, okay, this is the only way you can get out of here. And look, they're trying to glorify it and even make money out of it. When this is something that's just your inheritance, it's your it's your God given inheritance, source given inheritance, I should say. Yes, and so the Merkaba really is the wings of an angel when you think about it, you know, because again, you know, angels are beings that can you know transcend different dimensions and and they are in service to others, but you know, again, the active Merkaba is the wings that that people have represented for so long of, of an angel, so to speak. And so we could develop those as well. And, and many of us have. Mm -hmm. And and so we're no longer trapped. We're just basically here because we're trying to help others. And uh, I wanted to share this. This is from medicinalfoods.com, which you know there is a link on uh, every video up at the top where you could use the coupon code for EEA and get a discount. But they have a lot of articles, too. And so go check them out, you know, talking about aloe vera, which is, again, 99% water. And the remaining 1% is extremely powerful and can be so healing for so many things. Uh, aloe vera is great. I love adding it to shakes. Uh, there's all sorts of healing pro properties. It's alkalizing, help boost the immune system. It can definitely soothe any sort of irritation throughout the digestive system. Helps with skin you know, put, you put it on skin for burns. It, it's just an awesome, awesome thing that, you know, you should have in the house and I have to get some more. Yes. You so do. while I'm saying that, yeah. So I just wanted to share that. And I want to thank all of our patrons as well. Um, it was, we couldn't do it without your guys support. Make sure you are subscribed. Please do share the videos as much as possible. Wake up as many as we can stay prepared out there. God bless and namaste. Namaste.